the things we did in the workshop was to have the reporters craft stories, work together to craft stories from the information that they've been learning about, and to deliver those stories to the group and then get feedback. So they talked about things like water infrastructure and living shorelines and how areas around the coastline could deal with the issue of sea level rise and how they would be able to respond to it, how they would be able to possibly move to advancement zones away from the coast. So it was really a great experience, I think, for these reporters to work together and craft stories based on the resources that they learned here at the workshop and the science that they learned from the scientists that were here and also what they learned out in the field going to these islands and inlets. So I was going to let us start off, um, just a chance to share with each other, maybe start off with something that, you know, we, we've walking away from today that we didn't know coming in. I mean, I'm kind of walking away with this thinking, you know, when I write stories, um, really coming at it from it, uh, the human perspective of it all and telling it, you know, kind of what we've focused on and leading in with our stories is letting the people tell it and it may not be this is the science of it but you know I grew up here I've lived here for 75 years and these are the changes that I've seen and I think that's a really good segue to go into the science of it and you know why these changes are happening and you've got this individual who may not talk about retreating may not talk about any of the science of it but has you know this visual that they can paint for you of you know, I think somebody was talking about, you know, they said they could play in the forest and now it's a swamp or marsh or, you know, and I think those are great human visual aids that as a reporter we can write about and I, to really hit that message home. And one of the things that we were talking yesterday about oysters wanting to build on the bones of their grandfathers and their mm. parents and then Kirk was saying, the people right. mm -hmm. on the coast want to build on the bones of their grandparents. And so the ecosystems, I mean, we're just animals, really, you know, and so we have those ecosystems in common. And so if you could make that right. kind of, you know, this is the ecosystem that's at risk, just like you as a member of your ecosystem is at risk, and somehow bringing those two things together would be, I don't know, I thought the metaphor was kind of striking. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Having all that data and, and just the, and the illustrations too, the effective charts and, and graphics and things, and just the sources, because when you're starting from scratch sometimes it is kind of like, well, gee, who do I call? You, Ryan's going to get head up every single time. Yeah, I work for University <laughs> Public Service. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But, you know, getting more voices and more sources of information and data is just a huge, huge help for us. I, I want to echo that. Being able to, to back it up with a, with a solid graphic and, and be able to explain what the graphic means um, is, is, is really important. I think it was, it's here, it's now, and it's, and it's in our own backyards. And the stories that people were coming up with, I thought, told that much more clearly than anything I saw coming out of NOAA over the last 30 years. Um, and the other kind of a question I had is, it was clear from some of the interactions after the story that there was a lot of synergy or benefit from potential synergy of, you know, almost every story could have been improved listening to somebody else. And it kind of raised the question of how much of the people here, the journalists, are are collaborators and how much are they competitors? You know, will they go in the future? Will they call each other to to ask for you know insights or people to link up to, or are they going to go back to their corners? This kind of brainstorming used to happen within individual newsrooms quite a lot when there were That's more right. of us. <laughs> when there were newsrooms. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, when we would look at particularly projects and things like that, or even bigger stories, there would usually be more of a collaborative within the newsroom kind of uh, brainstorming kind of effort around that. But we have neither the time nor the people to do it much anymore, which is a shame.